So we're trying to find DF, and you know what, let's include the possibility of finding BE. What if the answer choices were different and we needed to do that? So maybe we want to find both of these forces, so we'd cut both of them. Before we start doing anything, we'll remember that we've got our reaction forces here. There's 75 newtons and 25. You could do some of moments about J and prove that. Well, uh, so we do our reaction forces, then we identify the members we need to cut, and then we continue our cut right through the uh, truss. So if I make my cut this way, there's nothing wrong with that. It follows all the rules. But if I use that cut, then I've cut through this, and no matter what equation I use, I'm going to have to kind of consider the force in member CE, which means I'm going to have to pay attention to the angle of CE. Its angle is known. It's, it's 15 meters tall and it's 8 meters wide, so we can deal with its angle, but I'd rather not. I also, if I make that cut, have to deal with the force in member CF, which is at a completely different angle. It's 5 meters tall, 8 meters wide. I don't want to have to deal with any of those angles. So given the choice, if I need to know about this member and that member, instead of cutting through CE and CEF, why don't I cut that way? Do you think that stands a good chance of simplifying our equations? Now, we're going to ignore the fact that we know that CB is a zero force member, and we know that CD has 100 newtons in it, but even ignoring those concepts, could we still solve this? Well, let's figure out what equations we've got. We've got sum of forces in the x direction equals zero, well, it's not likely to help us. So, and to be clear, what we're going to do is we're going to throw away this side of the truss, leaving us with a free body diagram. That looks like that. So there's A. And we've got BE over here. And we'll just put an arrow on that and an arrow on that and an arrow on that and not really worry about the directions of those arrows. Uh, we could cut through AB. You and I have already figured out that AB equals BE, so we could do that. That's kind of dependent on the geometry of the truss, so if, if we had something where we didn't already know that, or that weren't the case for some reason, you know, all it would take, if I put a little force on here at B, then that would make a lot less sense to cut through AB. You could, but, yeah. So our free body diagram, we got uh, some forces at B. We'll not forget our 100 Newton force down here. And everything we've cut, we've just slapped an arrowhead on. It really doesn't matter if these arrowheads that I put on here are facing in the right direction or not. If I calculate force DF based on an arrow showing me to go in that direction, and it ends up negative, I've still got the magnitude of df. I just, my guess right now is that it's in tension and it would turn out to be, uh, if, if, if it's negative, then that just means it would be in compression. I've drawn BE in tension. I actually, I know it's in compression. So if I calculated BE, I'd get a negative value for that. So don't worry too much about the direction of these arrowheads. Just put an arrow on everything that you've cut. All right, so let's look. Uh, do I want to use sum of forces in the x direction equals zero? Well, the only thing in the uh, with x direction components, I've got BE, which has an x direction component, and then I've got DF, which is entirely in the x direction. It's probably good to keep in mind, if I ever need to go back and calculate the force in BE, that's probably a good place to go. But it doesn't really get us started. We can look at our other equation, sum of forces in the y direction equals zero. 
and that's going to involve reaction force at A, minus the 100 Newton load, uh, plus BEY, plus CBY, uh, plus, or I guess we could do minus, whatever, um, CD uh, is in the y direction as well. That's a lot of unknown stuff. Now, you and I know some of those are zero force members and whatnot, but that's a lot of stuff to handle. So, not every time, but often, we look for sum of moments equals zero equation that might simplify it for us. What center of rotation would you like to use? Well, as usual, tell me a force you don't care about, and I'll draw its line of action. If we've decided that we're going to chase after df for now, at the moment we don't care about be. So I'll draw its line of action. What other forces do you not care about? Well, CE is actually entirely gone. I didn't cut through CE, so I don't have to worry about the force in it. I, I excised it. I cut around it. So CE doesn't exist in my free body diagram. So which of these other arrows do I want to uh, be able to ignore? BC. So I'll draw its line of action. That blue line of action also goes through CD, and it goes through the 100 Newton force, so that's pretty helpful. So we're going to do some of moments about the intersection of those two lines, which is at B. The only things left that don't have a lot that aren't on the green line of action or blue line of action are the reaction force at A, which is wrong problem, 75 newtons, at a distance of 8 meters, so a vertical force with a horizontal distance of 8 meters, and that's pushing us clockwise, which I like to call negative, though the solution file 